Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I did with my Kill Team Octarius terrain, how I de it and made it usable for other systems as well. If you like what I'm doing, check me out on Facebook and Instagram, Adam's Hobby Stuff, like, comment, subscribe on YouTube, all that kind of jazz. So I'm showing you here the finished article of terrain, which I've done to match in very much to my Necromunda uh, scenery. If you've watched those previous videos, you'll link that. So I can use it in a big game if necessary. The biggest piece of work on here was the conversion of the pump tower. We're looking at now, you'll see I've of pump arms gone and there's some homemade metal panels covering the holes that type of thing so i'll show you that later a lot of the conversion work in this set was relatively simple um, it's just application of, of effort and i will go through the painting scheme in the end now when i started the kill team box it wasn't really an intention to convert it to use the necromunda stuff but i looked at the little barricades realized how similar they were to the necromunda barricades you know they've got the sort of bullet hole a similar aesthetic and thought right actually this could work so that started me off on that train of thought of how am I going to make it mesh. The rubble pile type things we've got here have a lot of sort of orky bits in, bits of plane, that kind of thing. But some of them don't, some of them are fairly simple. So the piles were not going to be able to be de -orked. But that kind of fits in quite well because we know on Necromunda, orcs have invaded there before. They were pushed away. So it stands to reason there would be piles of orc rubble left knocking around. And for any other game systems as well. So this doesn't have to be Necromunda themed. You could just be de this because you want it to fit into your imperial world that's had an orc invasion. I just think it gives a little bit different dynamic to the scenery. So you see simple de-orking there, so some little symbols on this pile, a pair of clippers and a hobby knife, and off we go. Now, I'm not going to take all the symbols off every last piece of terrain because it takes take far too long, and actually the rubble piles and the kind of barricades kind of make sense to leave some of it on there. But I wanted just to have a practice on these piles because it's obviously less important than the main bit of terrain. And the initial uh, symbol removal is... Like you see, really, really simple. Decent pair of hobby clippers. Trim off as much as you can, you know, with those clippers being as neat and tidy as possible. Uh, some areas you won't be able to. And then get in there very carefully with the hobby knife after and just scrape off as much of those symbols as possible. Now, given that this is, for me, going to be underhive, it doesn't matter if I leave chunks of those symbols on or whether this is just the gangers moving the equipment and not wanting to display anything orky. So you can leave it a little bit rough and ready, but I'll show you what I've done to get it as smooth as possible. Now, the main uh, panels take a little bit more work because the symbols are a little bit larger. and I would make sure you don't do it when it's fully built because you can't kind of manoeuvre around. But same process, clipper off as much as you can. These are flat-sided clippers, so you can get a fairly good job just with a set of clippers. But then after that, you can move on with... Um, a hobby knife as we've seen before again being very careful taking off small amounts one at a time scraping with the flat edge if you need to and you can dig out a metal file if you've got that to get as much down as possible and i found you could get a decent job removing those symbols just with these sort of little tools a little bit more difficult you're getting some of the teeth off around the tops so you've just got to get in the angles a little bit there and maybe trim it bit by bit to do that but again not too difficult to remove uh, anything on these models it's about what we do after to smooth some of it down. And as you know, if you've seen the kit yourself, some of these pieces are over kind of areas where you've got holes and things you need to either fill in or drill out, which we'll talk about shortly. So work your way around the kit and just be um, slow, methodical, gentle. That's worth pointing out. I did miss a few of these teeth. Um, got to the point of about to spray them with undercoat and went, oh, I've missed a couple and thought, you know what? I'm going to leave a couple on because why not? That's kind of what would probably happen in reality that they're building their settlement and shack from the remains of an orc piece and you know, bits would get missed so don't be too worried if you don't get every single thing off or there's some that you think i don't want to do those stages but as you can see um actually relatively easy to cut out and what i'm doing here is on some of the metal panels you see there's a lot of damaged areas and nicks and cuts on the metal so actually when you remove the teeth you've then got to go back on and re-put that damage on so that the top where you remove the teeth matches the under area where actually it's more damaged than it now will be when you've smoothed it out. So onto the pump tower. You see here I've put the two kind of cylinders together that look like the fuel cylinders. Really don't like the, the idea of a, a traditional kind of fuel pump um, working for me in the underhive or even you might not want it for yours. So this is just a quick and simple conversion I've done. Taken off the pump arm at the top and then continue to build the rest of the base um, of that kind of pump tower. So again, taking some symbols off where necessary, smoothing it down and just building it and we'll see what I'm going to do with um, that as we go. So that's now the piece assembled without the kind of lifting arm, 
got a hole in the top. So here we should be then building across that kind of pump arm with the weight on the end and, and the orc face and linking it in with the um, what looks like a fire hydrant piece at the end. Again, didn't want to use that entire arm. That's the piece I really didn't like. So it's just a case of digging out the clippers, removing that from the top. So I suppose if you're going to do conversions like this, uh, I would advise look grab a real good think before you do. Not the end of the world if you start hacking things up and it doesn't work. And again, I wasn't 100% sure this was going to work when I started it. But, you know, really have a think about what you want to get out of the end of this and think about how you're going to cover up the gaps, how you're going to cover up any cracks you make, what you're going to do to kind of finish it off. Because if we were to leave it like just looking like this, yes, it doesn't look like a, an orky kind of fuel extractor now, but it also doesn't look, doesn't look like a finished piece of terrain. So always try and have your vision in the future so you know how you're going to overcome those obstacles. And obviously that's what kind of I had in place of, of how we could fix it. So I've previously shown videos on how to make uh, tentacles and things using the green stuff world roller so i won't cover that now but i will link in the description below how you can do this either with a piece of equipment you have to buy or you can make these little kind of tentacles and fuel lines and things with a comb um, and some green stuff so i'll link those videos below if you want to do that so my vision now is that this pump piece at the bottom is, is where the fuel is getting pumped out from we've got the canisters at the back um, this is you know where they're going to supply the vehicles or whatever with fuel. So that's just, there you can see, just the very end of a Sister Battle Flamer that I've cut down from my bits box, attaching that to the fuel cable that we've made out of green stuff, uh, and then just making it now so it looks like a sort of fuel dispensing area. So it's still got the similar vibe to what it was originally intended for, um, but just without those pieces that I particularly just, I just don't like what they look like. And there's nothing wrong with converting scenery because you don't like the look of it, even if it is a beautiful bit of terrain, which, you know, it is. So that's the converted piece. So it looks like a fuel dispenser. Now to work on filling the holes. Again, green stuff world, blue stuff mold here. Won't go through how to make those molds. Again, I've got another video for that and I'll link that in the description down below. So just literally I've cast up the panel that is to the right of that hole. I've cast that identical panel up, bit of trimming down, and then we'll use the exact same panel, but slightly trimmed just at the side to cover up where that hole is from where the um, pylon should have been. So I'm looking quite nice now, quite pleased with it. And my intention was to use uh, a big chunk of Ken cast up green stuff to be like a shooting platform at the side from where we've taken that kind of rig off. Now I started to trim it down and use that exact same piece. I thought it would be absolutely fine, um, but realized actually when I test fitted it, it wasn't quite what I was looking for. It, it just looked a bit unsized, as you'll see here when uh, we place it on and just kind of test fit it. So and that's fine, you know, uh, the concept is fine, but the execution of it, uh, it just looked a little too large. The beauty of the piece I cast up, and again, this is from the main um, set. So this is the uh, metal panel from the, I suppose, tower with the wheel on the bottom. You'll know what I mean if you've uh, got the set. I just kind of cut it down around the rivet so that it looked like a completed panel. And that actually then made me think, yep, yeah, this is the size I'm after. Um, happy with that, trim it down and crack on. So following the concept I came up with initially, but a slight tweak to make it make more sense. Back onto the bulk of the scenery now. So I talked before about how when you remove the teeth, sometimes the metal panel underneath then doesn't match the area you've removed the teeth from, especially so on the areas where there were the holes in that metal panel the tooth was attached to. So I took a drill bit that was the same size as those holes, all that pin drill, and then simply drilled corresponding holes in the section where we've made it completely smooth. Now, I didn't get it 100% accurate, but you know, it's close enough. So when it's painted and we do the rust effects and those kind of things on it, it will look absolutely fine. So you can see there, finished article, not 100%. Once painted, I think it blends in quite nicely. It's these little details that can really add value to your build. So now we're going to go an extra level at removing any last dregs of those detail. We could get away with painting this here, especially as some of the later techniques. We're going to look at putting posters in certain areas, but I just wanted to take it an extra level smoother because I didn't necessarily want to put posters and artwork on every single area we've taken the symbols from. So look, this is just a, it's a fake Dremel. It was about 15 quid from uh, Lidl. So I smoothed it down and then wanted to put a little bit more battle damage because it almost ended up being a little too smooth. So just using a couple of different attachments to really take that plastic down as far as possible. Now, if you haven't got one of these, would I go out and buy one just to do one scene reset? No, I wouldn't. You can get it close enough just with the clippers and the hobby knife. And especially if you're going to do some of the poster work we're going to do later. So once I've done that, we're on to the final stage of damaging the building. The 
obviously barricades that are there have got bullet holes in it and strangely the scenery set doesn't which i find a little odd um so i'm just going to drill a few bullet holes in and around the doorways on some of the panels not loads not going crazy so this is the, the pin drill same as before slightly smaller thing and then just widen the hole out if you want to with a hobby knife and that is all the damaging and conversion work we're doing as you can see here that it's undercoating it black spray followed by lead belcher because there's a lot of metal on this terrain and then onto the painting now what i don't want to do is i don't want to have thousands of colors across this terrain um, you could do you could go mad there's obviously loads and loads of detail but i'm going to go for some simple colors and transfer it across all areas of that terrain now for me i've used like an army green on my fuel cans and um, military equipment kind of thing for other pieces of terrain so i'm going to match that so all the ammo boxes or the jerry cans are going into that kind of army green color then i've chosen to do anything fuel related on this set in a deep red now i'm going to paint it i'm not block painting everything in i have done on the um ammo can as you can see there because that's a military ammo can it will probably be nicely painted and kept control of but anything to do with the fuel areas i'm considering this is you know battered this is out in the wilderness either an orky set because of the octarius terrain or i'm doing it kind of for necromunda more so that it's going to be battered the paint's going to be chipped so when i'm painting it i'm kind of leaving probably 50 percent of the silver showing through from underneath depending where it is if it's an area where people are going to be walking on um, or is going to take more damage or not being cared for as much i'm probably leaving that a little bit more but you can see here on the fuel tower i'm probably leaving maybe a quarter showing through but half in some areas because we want this to look worn dented and whatever and one tip to do is if there's any dents molded into the model leave that area with the metal showing through because it looks like the impact has chipped off the paint now we're going to go on to yellow because throughout the rubble piles there's a lot of obviously crashed orc ships and fighters and that kind of thing so you know or yellow is an orc color it gives it a little bit of color pop but again not going too crazy now I'm using Retributor Armour here in two different ways. We're either using it to highlight um, the Imperial Eagles, you know, sort of make them pop out, covering up some nuts and bolts, that kind of thing with this colour. Or I'm going to use it to add on to the rusted, uh, dirty effect of metal, as we'll see in a minute. And it does work very well in two different ways, because when you paint it on the Aquilas here and on some of the uh, cogs and things as much as you want, it then looks like brass. What we're then going to move on and do with exactly the same colour is paint it on all the kind of metal beams and rib areas and exhaust and anything that looks slightly rusty. So you can see here, I'm just dabbing it on, being quite quick. I'm not worrying about whether it's covering it properly. So some areas are relatively thick, some are relatively thin, and we're covering maybe half to three quarters of the area on some. On some of the beams, it's probably less than 50%. And again, being very quick, very gentle dry brush. Now, the reason for this is when we do an ink wash days later over the top of this brass color, it builds up what looks like a rust effect underneath. And if you do it slightly heavier in one place, slightly lighter in another, it gives a multi kind of toned dirt rust effect. Because if we just left everything with lead belcher, um, you would have one tone of um, rust and dirt showing through. So you can do millions of colors to make rust uh, and spend hours and hours of time. But the point of this build was kind of to be relatively quick put enough effort in that the scenery pops on the table looks really good but not so much effort that you know i'd be painting this scenery for the following month similar thing with the blues we're doing here now this color scheme was chosen specifically to match into my necromunda terrain but you could do whatever color you want now i want the kind of metal panels to look like they've been prized from the wall of the hive or whatever because that's the color my hive is but i don't want to do every single panel like that so i probably did maybe a third of the panels in this blue on all different parts if i was putting it on a walkway i would have more silver showing as it's worn away if i was putting it on the tower as you can see here i made sure there wasn't as much silver showing just in those areas where the dents are where it looks like the paint might have chipped off now you could use your highlight color whatever color you want but i think the blue and red looks quite nice and again ties it in with the terrain and the last color we're really going to use uh, in in volume anyway is black because there's a lot of tires knocking around the scatter terrain it's also a good color choice to use on some metal panels as well because it looks like you put a bit more effort in if you've got some of the panels painted another color but what the black doesn't do is then swamp the the blue and um, the silver areas and it doesn't look like you're just going like garish amounts of color so the black the red the blue looks looks decent on there without for me swamping it with too many colors 
last color we're going to use um, is just a brown color to pick up the wood i also then took this brown and used any areas of cloth around the terrain because there are some bits where there's like an old spanner line around or an axe that's been stuck through and that really is all the color so we're just looking at basic painting there's nothing too fancy in there basic techniques um, and now going to an ink wash stage so there's a lot of scenery to ink wash here um, use a glove because there's no really sensible place to hold these models so you will get it on yourself i'm upturned my cutting board so that you're bound to spill some just try and keep your desk and that sort of thing clean and when you are inking i've not really been consistent in the volume of ink i've put on you can see here i've put quite a lot onto the ridge metal panels i'm taking a little bit off but my kind of method for this was certain panels will pick up more muck than others so if it was a flat smooth panel i tried not to put too much ink on if it was a ridged panel or an area where a lot of footfall might happen i put a bit more ink on and then you can see after the ink has dried the effects we've got so hopefully you can see there the metal at the top it, there's four or five different colors of metal kind of showing through because of the volume of ink we've used quite happy with the um how it's settled on the wood and whatever now you can use any ink you want there i've used a vallejo sepia wash any kind of dark ink is what we're after here because wanting to sort of dull this down and the next stage is now is just highlighting so nothing complex here no real fancy techniques it's just a little bit of edge highlighting or you could dry brush this on you can see i'm just doing it with an old um just an old brush nothing um technical on this and go around all the model and just put a next layer of the colors you've originally used back over where you've done it now i didn't do it on every single part because you know you want actually lots of different tones kind of showing through we don't want everything to be the same we don't want everything pristine we don't want every panel looking like every other panel so just so you see here dotting onto the red covering maybe half at most of the red that we've already put on uh, some areas even less now so you saw there the first brush i was using was an old battered brush and i was stippling the red on um, i'm now using a sort of better quality brush and i'm just kind of dotting the red on so that actually there's slightly different textures showing on these red areas depending which area of the model there is same process with this yellow painting it on here and trying to leave sort of more than 50% of the original colour showing so that you get some gradations showing through. You're not going into where the wash has been in the deep areas and the recesses. So having a play. And you can see here, I've not touched the metal yet, but even at this point, looking at the metal on this model, it looks like there's four or five different types of metal on there. Um, so I'm really pleased with how that's kind of come out. You can see just working on the blue here with just a slight stippling, slight painting effect with a normal brush actually the silvers look four or five different type of metal colors on there and it's all just from one wash kind of how much volume of wash you put on some of that bronze work we did before with that retributor armor and really just you know making it dirty uh, looking when i did get to the metal stage i used um, a bulk of metal kind of color and just picked out hinges so where would get all the wear and tear that the rust would be rubbed off so you know in these um valves as we should call them on the doors they would get a lot of use those would be a little bit cleaner a little bit sharper than others other areas are just left with the sort of dirty metal picked certain metal panels that i thought had gone maybe a bit too mucky looking that these would probably be quite um, clean because of where the feet are going it's a fairly smooth panel put some metal on there to to lift that back up from being that really dirty metal the black same thing uh, same process hope it's not boring you too much that i'm just talking about the uh, same process and different panels but it's just to show you simple techniques um some of the black panels again are left completely untouched some i just dabbed a little bit of color on uh, depending where it was on the model and that's the kind of uh, general technique i've done as we're going through there you can see the bullet holes actually on those doorways i didn't talk about this before i have dropped some metal uh, some of the silver color directly into those bullet holes to make them stand out to make them look a bit more recent so this is now really all the painting you'd need to do now you can see where i've taken the symbols off there you could actually get away without putting anything on those symbols i think they look okay one of the things i did was when painting over the areas where the symbols were i made sure to blotch it to kind of cover any areas where symbols might be showing but i want to now do a few posters now these are i've talked about these before when doing a commander set if you search under hive art on google it's a chap who does these for free you can do a ko-fi thing for him to lob him some money if you want um but these are a downloadable free resource if you search under hive art um, again because i'm tying it into necromunda that's what i've chosen to use but i've used posters that 
don't have any direct Necromunda kind of wording on them. Now, when you cut them out from the sheet, use old paper when you print them. Don't use really good quality paper because you want them to look a little bit battered. And you can also, as you saw there, when you cut them out, raggy up the edges. You know, use your scalpel to chop some little nicks and things out the side. You don't want them looking pristine. Now, it's a simple thing to stick them down. Make sure the ink is dried on the thing you printed first. Dip it into some PVA glue at the back. And I've just seen here, you can squad it down with an old brush. The PVA will then splodge out the sides, rub it all off, rub it onto the front of the picture um, to seal it in. And that's as simple as you need to do. Now, don't do any varnishing or anything on top of this for at least 24 hours till it's dried. And then we're back to the finished scenery again. So hopefully that's kind of made some sense. My rambling has um, uh, been sensible for you. Showing you how I've converted it, showing you how I've de-orked it, showing you some of the simple tips for, you know, drilling holes, cleaning up, a um, little bit of blue stuff and green stuff work going on in there, and some posters kind of at the end. So a simple uh, but effective scene rebuild, I think. I hope you've liked it. If you have, comment below, subscribe, all that kind of YouTube jazz, and then I will be back doing other stuff. Obviously, I've got the rest of this Kill Team box set to do. I'm going to a little mini tournament in the next week or so, so there'll be a little bit about preparing for that coming up on the channel soon. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you soon.